you want to be motivated you want to be taking action and so part of the way to do that and reduce the stress in your mind and still be moving ahead is to be moving wisely to be creating systems and creating efficiencies in what you do that gets you there with less effort hey good morning you guys it's uh a little after five in the morning and I'm whispering because it's still really quiet in the house here. People are just starting to get up. I'm getting ready to go do my chores. I wanted to bring you out on the property, share a little bit about what's been going on. But first, I need a cup of coffee. <music> Nothing like some fresh home dairy steamed up to go with the espresso. Okay, let's see how it turned out. Oh, that's good. I don't know if you're a coffee drinker, but this is the way to start the day for me. You know, I think it's really important to start your day to have a routine. I love a good espresso with some home, steamed home dairy. And to uh, take a little quiet time for a few minutes before everything gets too active to reflect, to pray, to read my Bible. Whatever that is for you, uh, it is really encouraging and helpful with all the things we're doing, especially if you're working somewhere and then doing the homestead to uh, have a really good routine in the morning that just gets you grounded and going. Right, I'm grounded. Let's get this day going and see what's going on out there on the property. This is a pretty nice walk to work here. Carolyn's cottage garden. I'm starting to call it the cottage jungle. This place is just amazing. We do have to water here. Thankfully, just about two months, sometimes three out of the year uh, to keep things green and one of the things that I learned from being with Joel Saladin recently, and that's about water, and that uh, just if we've got the water, I mean, we, we need to be careful. We don't want to waste water, certainly, but if we've got the water, um, to use it, yeah, and uh, how much help it's going to bring. Terraces are looking a little wild and overgrown, but uh, beautiful. You can see we've got lettuces down in there. Another thing I learned from Joel years and years ago that has been so, so helpful to me because I am a perfectionist. I like everything just right. You know, one of his sayings is good enough is perfect. That's been really tough. That's been a struggle for me because I'm a um, perfect is good enough kind of guy. And I like everything really, really dialed in. And you know, I'll tell you though, if you're gonna try to do that on the homestead, if everything's gotta be perfect, if it's gotta be this picture perfect hobby farm that everything just looks pristine all the time, you're, not, you're gonna spend all your time making things pretty. You're not gonna really get anything done. You're not gonna really be able to build any resilience. Um, you're gonna have a lot more failure because your attention is gonna be on the perfection of everything, not on the goodness of everything and the productivity of everything. And I was really reminded of that uh, being with him for a week filming um, of just the reality of the farm and the beauty in it, but it doesn't need to be perfect. It needs to be real. It needs to be practical. And uh, that was such a good reminder for me. You hear that pump on? I'm going to go shut it off so I can keep talking here. But the reality of our morning right now, and uh, last year we had a super, super dry year and uh, was trying to nourish this pasture along to get it going and uh, really, really had a tough time at it. We needed a way to get water out there, so got myself a system. We've got water and ponds right here to, to pump water because I, I just couldn't do it out of my existing water system. I am so, so thankful that I'm doing this. I put this off for years and years and tried to manage without it, and um, it's just kind of silly. We've got the water, and so I know everybody doesn't have water, but if you have it, learn how to use it well. We water early in the morning, 
and in the evening the air is still there's not a lot of breeze the sun isn't up so the majority of our water is getting on the ground it's not blown away or evaporated connor is the fence hot okay good he turned it off usually when they come out to do chores in the morning uh, they shut it off for a few minutes and sheep and everybody are used to it so it doesn't usually cause us a problem one of the things we've done this year is fencing we waited three years, really got to know the land, and we just did a section of fencing, but it's, it's the part closest to the house. Really, really important to us. This area is gonna be high use, and if we do it right, we'll be able to run animals in a few years here, three or four times over the same ground. And so we needed a fencing system that really worked for us. So here, close to the house, we went with a close wire netting. You can see these gates are wire netted. And this helps to keep all the critters from the cows to the sheep to especially the chickens in. It would keep the dog in if we needed it. If we had to put them out there, we don't have a lot of predator problems here, but uh, it would certainly keep them if we needed it in. And it keeps the geese in who do help. They're down, I don't know if we can see them. There's the geese down there, yeah. They're, they're a great predator protection. Tristan, how you doing this morning? All right. What are you up to? We about to move the sheep. One of the things I love about this fence that we did is this electric wire right here that we ran across the top. You can see it runs all along everywhere. What this does is it gives us the ability to then put portable fencing just about anywhere in any way that we need on the property. That is really, really helpful. When we got here, I used this property, you know, we were excited to get going. It, it, it uh, looked like it had a lot of grass in it and I didn't really look at it and think about it close enough when I, I got particularly the sheep out here and a couple cows and I really overworked the pasture. Mm -hmm. And then we had some dry years and it set me back several years. And so we've had to have been grazing in the forest and staying a lot closer to the barn until this year where this grass finally got coming up well enough. I reseeded it and harrowed it a bit and put some compost out and uh, we finally got comfortable feeling like uh, we could use this. And so we're now out here uh, doing some rotational grazing and uh, moving these guys every day. But I wanted to show you a couple of systems that have um, really made this work that I learned from Justin Rhodes. This has really um, made what we're doing a lot easier. And you guys, I gotta tell you, if you're not familiar with Justin, I'm sure a lot of you are. I spent a week with him at his place filming, really excited. He's doing a class for us for the School of Traditional Skills. Um, but it was just an awesome week. We butchered chickens, just did a whole class filming on raising meat birds, and he's the guy. He is really the guy out there on the homestead level that uh, is doing this. And um, and then I hung out with a day and did chores with him and, and uh, we did some videos and we'll, we'll link to those so you can check a couple of those out that he did. I just have a really, really newfound respect for him. I had a great time hanging out with him. We had a lot of fun. He has got one of the just boots on the ground, solid running homesteads that I've seen. It's the real deal, it's working. He's making it happen, he and Rebecca and their family, they're working together, they got a good family unit. And I was just really, really impressed being there, seeing all the systems that he's got in place. And he's been there for a long time. He's been on his property for like 20 years. I don't know how long, I didn't think to ask how long he's been, you know, running uh, these kinds of systems, but it's working and it's working really good. His land is healthy, the animals are healthy, things are happening. Just really, really cool. And I learned a lot, I learned a lot of tips and tricks and just different things, just getting to, to hang out and be there. I also had a new, got a newfound respect for what he does and what he brings to all of us uh, in the way that he films. And you know you know us, we're a little more uh, educational usually, just directly trying to show stuff, show you how to get it done. And he's a great storyteller and still teaching, still showing how to, how to get things done, but doing it in story form. And that's hard work. That is hard to film that way. It just blows me away, all the little things he's gotta do along the way. And it, it, when you're trying to operate a homestead and then stop and film everything and put this together to make a good story, it's tough. It, it, it interrupts everything you're doing, but he's great at it. If you guys aren't familiar, go check his channel out and subscribe. I, I just had such a great time hanging with him. I'm gonna be looking forward to hanging with him at the summit this September. He's just got so much to share and so much that we can learn from. Moving on, this, this little rig right back here, that is the sheep shaw. What's up, buddy? 
How you doing, huh? The animals need shade, right? And so that's one of the challenges that we have in rotational grazing. These are Cotswolds. Uh, we were raising Gotland Icelandics for a long time. Um, they were just a little too small for us. So we went to these Cotlands, or Cotswolds, sorry, and they're great. Now you can see Tristan here is moving them on to the next spot. They've grazed this. This pasture isn't super thick yet, but it's doing better. They've grazed it. And so he's gonna move. Look how easy, this is what I wanted to show you right here. I'm glad I caught it. Look how easy that is to move. Okay, they're happy to get on to a new patch of ground. This sheep shaw really makes what we're doing doable and easy because these guys got to have shade and it's got to be something we can move every day. This thing is super lightweight. Now I built mine a little bigger. This is 10 by 12. And so this could handle quite a few sheep. It's got minerals. You got to make sure your animals have minerals every day. That's just kelp, Thorvin kelp and Redmond salt. And I've been doing that for, I don't know, 17 years. And uh, we've had very, very low animal uh, mortality or sickness and disease. Always having those good minerals available besides fresh water and uh, good forage. Let's move on to the chickens. Chickens is something that just about everybody can do, anybody can do on scale. And this is another one that's a new system that we're implementing because we're used to doing chicken tractors like this where the chickens are all uh, enclosed instead of free ranging like this. And I, they've, they've all got their benefits, but this is the A-frame. I call it the Idaho A-frame. This is one that uh, I built, designed uh, from the basic kind of Joel Salatin style chicken tractor, but I wanted something you could walk into and, but uh, was a little more sturdy than some of the hoop house style chicken tractors. And they could hold the snow loads because we get a lot of snow. I like these. You can just walk into them. They got a place to hang the waters and feeders. So we don't have to pick them up and move them, but they are heavy. We got to have them on four wheels. And I always wish that the chickens could free range a little bit more. You know, when I got to look in at what Justin was doing with this rig right here, it really excited me. It's like, oh man, this thing is really, really easy to move. It's lightweight, it's low cost. Yeah, you gotta pick up the feeders and the waters. And you see, we've got a couple waters out here, but you just set them on the roof of this thing and you just move it to the next spot. The chickens are getting out on pasture uh, a lot more and they're maybe not impacting one piece of ground quite as intensely, which can be good. Um, but, but they're spreading it out and they're also getting a chance to forage a little bit more. And we've put in lanes. If you can see on my left side, there's netting right there. And there is netting on this side. The sheep have already been through here. So they're moving a little bit faster and the chickens are gonna make their way across. And so we leave it open to them in the front. In the back, we put netting behind them so they can't go backwards. These are some turkeys. There's nobody in this one right now. These turkeys are gonna get split up when they get a little bit bigger in each one. But what I wanted you to see is the netting right there. We put that netting behind them because the ground does get worked pretty hard. And then we just move forward and that allows these chickens to get out there, get a little more free ranging. This system is working for us. I just I was really excited to get out here and hang out with you guys for one. It's just been so long. Usually I'm doing a lot more videos uh, in the summertime, in the springtime and um, haven't had that opportunity because I've been out filming classes uh, for the School of Traditional Skills. Yeah, I'm really excited about that, but I have missed getting to be here and be a part of things. The sun's just about to break the trees. Uh, we want to minimize impact with the tractor and it's got a lot of feed. We're feeding 200 chickens, so that's a lot of feed. 200, 150, something like that. Turkeys and the kids have been hauling, you know, kids drive and hauling feed and water uh, out a lot because we didn't have any place to store it. And we looked around and go, hey, you know what? We got some pallets, we got some old barrels. Let's put the feed out here. And, and once a week, uh, we come out with a tractor and fill this up and bring it out and just get it close. It's not too far away. These, tra these tractors are moving, you know, chicken tractors are moving towards it here. And gosh, that makes it so much easier. And so it's so important to, to think about and even be willing to spend money on systems that make your day-to-day -day easier. If you're part of our membership, 
you would have caught that we did a um, farm tour not too long ago. But one of the things we talked about that makes this life doable, and we talked a lot about is systems and putting the right systems in place and taking the time to put the right systems into place and how valuable that is and how doable it makes it when you've got good systems in. And you know, this is something we've learned the hard way over 20 years, either getting things going ahead of our systems and then just tripping over everything and having every kind of calamity or sometimes being slow to take action. Sometimes it's just because we don't have the money. Sometimes it's because you get in the mindset of not having the money and just like, no, I can't put money into that. I can't do that. One of the things we've done is we have hauled a lot of heavy feed and a lot of heavy water. We've spilled a lot of water. We've spilled a lot of feed over the years because we just weren't thinking smart. And, you know, I, I read the books. I've, I've read Joel. I followed him for a long time and the different things he talks about, about efficiencies. And he's huge on efficiencies. And yeah, he's got a big farm, but you know, what he does, you can do on an acre to a thousand acres. And I'm just even more convinced of that being on his place and uh, realizing that, man, I, I've just, I've making it too hard on us, too hard on the kids. And thinking about you guys and how many people are trying to do this and still work a job and build some security and some resiliency, some extra food. And uh, we need every little bit of efficiency that we can. And so I'm showing you a few things here those feeders are one these these chicken tractors and the meat shaw are another that makes it easy to have them out on pasture i'm not worried about them out in the heat and they've got uh, especially chickens have some you know overhead predator protection they can all run under there if there are some birds overhead that are a problem but it's creating efficiencies it's making our world easier that is really really important and really really valuable so i want to encourage you guys as you're looking at your place to do that and you know what? Be willing to spend the money. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna sh talk about one more system here that did cost a little bit of money that just has revolutionized and made things so much easier for us out here. But what I wanted to show you that has changed everything is this black pipe right here. This has made our life so, so much easier. Uh, when we've been trying to do the rotation on animals, you know, we've been hauling water because I didn't want to put the money into the pipe and into the valves. They're expensive and you don't have to be brass, but they're going to hold up better out here in us in our climate. That water pipe now has gotten us water out to the fields. And with this water pipe down this fence line behind me, and we're going to run another one and on that fence line down there and it goes down and out we've gotten out hoses in strategic places and instead of hauling water we've got a hose that reaches our waters wherever sometimes we have to move it to a different valve i, I can't tell you how much time that is saving us and how much easier the job is out here and I, the guys are loving it and i'm so thankful for that and that was really just inspiration from being with joel and really taking it to heart getting to soak it in and go wow okay I'm, I'm working too hard. I'm making this too hard. Sometimes you need to just bite the bullet and, and, you know, what is a priority? What are some systems you can do to make this doable and take a little bit of the frustration or just the time out of it? So you've got less steps and you've got more time to do other things. And it is so worthwhile. These are just a few of the things that I've been learning, I wanted to share with you. One, I wanted to get out here on video because I hadn't done one in a while. We're still filming. We're still getting the pieces together for the Traditional Skills Summit and the launch of the School of Traditional Skills. And uh, so I'm gonna be out and about a little bit more, but it was just great to get out here and get to hang with you, share a little bit about what we've been doing, what uh, I've been learning, you know, and I've been hanging out with a whole lot of people. I've been most inspired because it's where my heart is, uh, being with Joel Salatin and Justin Rhodes. And uh, so I wanted to share with you guys, you know, some of the things I've learned and that I've been inspired and in that uh, we're putting to work here on our homestead. And I hope that that's an encouragement. I hope it's an inspiration to you. Whatever it is, whatever you're doing, you may be doing more gardening and chicken, chickens. Th that's cool, that's fine. Or, you know, pigs, we've got some, some Cooney Coonies out here grazing in a small area, which is wonderful for a small lot. I mean, you want, you want the homestead pig that can live on just about nothing. These Cooney Coonies are amazing, but whatever it is, yeah, you want to be motivated. You want to be taking action. And so part of the way to do that and reduce 
the stress in your mind and still be moving ahead is to be moving wisely, to be creating systems and creating efficiencies in what you do that gets you there with less effort. It's been great hanging with you. Uh, I want you to go check out the video right here that Justin did while I was with him. Uh, I got to hang out on his farm, do his chores with them. And uh, we got to talk about the School of Traditional Skills and what's going on with that. And it was just a fun time. So go check that out. I'll see you soon.